Welcome to 6-5 Guys. Hi, I'm Steve Lawrence. And I'm Ed Mobley. For this episode, we're going to take a look at how do you actually prepare for going out to a new location that you've never shot at before by gathering some information and doing some analysis before actually taking off on your trip. Yeah, Steve, I've noticed that you've almost, that you come up with what I call a dossier. I've, I've, I've never seen so much information gathered about a location before I've gone there. So, uh, folks, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to show you step by step how uh, Steve comes up with that information so that uh, you can do the same thing too and feel really, really uh, prepared. So, folks, let's take a look. All right, Steve, so why don't you show the folks how you put together that dossier? <laughs> my, my famous dossier. Exactly. Of, uh, maps and uh, dope. All right, so, you know, guys might be going to uh, a match for the hunt of a lifetime. They've got, they finally have that uh, tag that they can go and... Um, or Good friends or, that just want you to come out. Yeah, yeah. friends that want you to come out to Whatever go. Whatever the go scenario. Right? Yeah. So in this, this location, we've chosen uh, a location in Wyoming, the small town of Warland. And uh, our buddy out there is, uh, got us hooked up to a match. And uh, he's told us that um, right off here, right, right south of the airport, is a gulch that um, offers some pretty good shooting. Now... Nice thing about Google Maps um, is on the bottom left-hand corner they do have satellite imagery. You just click on it, and um, you know we can zoom in and uh, actually get some intelligence to try and understand what does the terrain look like. What are the different terrain features, elevation changes, um, you know, vegetation, and so on. So um, here's that wildcat gulch he was telling us about. And we can see that if we actually zoom in, we can get down to uh, looking at the bottom right hand corner within uh, a 50 feet difference in um, what we can actually take a look at. So here we can see a little bit of water and trees and there's some trails and elevation changes and so on. So it helps us to actually come prepared to know what to expect um, as far as terrain and what we're going to be encountering. If there's going to be a lot of hiking involved. That sort of thing. Well, yeah, I mean, I can tell you what, what, what this is telling me is it's probably going to be dirtier than, than most places, so we mm -hmm. need to be prepared with that. Um, you know, there's that area of trees there, so if, if we were, were back in, in this area, mm -hmm. uh, right, you know, right by the, the trees, that would probably impact, uh, you know, how we would uh, read wind because the wind where we're at may not be the, the most accurate uh, indicator. Right. Yep. Um, and then it just, particularly for a match where, you know, I naturally would, would tend to feel a little apprehensive and nervous, the degree to which I can actually see pictures of where I'm going, mm -hmm. and, and I'll even drag down the little street view guy, yep. where, where I feel like I'm there and I've, I've been there, at least for me, it just it just gives me a lot of comfort and I just feel a lot, lot less nervous. Absolutely. Yep. So, um, you know, what I'll do is once I have a sense of what our area of operations is. I'll actually get some snapshots of that satellite imagery, draw in and make notations on those those hard copies in terms of, you know, how we're gonna uh, hike through certain areas and so on. Um, the other nice thing about Google Maps is because we know we're gonna be staying in town in this example, we can actually take a look um, at how we would actually get there to the match location and so on just through the routing. Uh, we'll need at least first find out you know where we're going to be staying. So a number of websites out there: Priceline, uh, Expedia, Kayak. Um, you know, take your pick, whichever you, one you want to use. Um, in this example, you know, we'll put in um, our in Warland location. All right, and what we find out is, you know, there are a dozen, at least a dozen hotels or motels that we could stay at, and I believe, Ed, you've stayed here before. I have a nice, nice area, and, you know, what I've realized is once you get away from the coast and the big cities, you can find nice accommodations for 60 70 bucks a night, just about any place you go. Yeah. 
It looks like a, a number of these, you know, accommodate to your road travelers, um, you know, probably hunters and so on. So we can find accommodations here at reasonable prices. Uh, we can plug in the address and route between here and where we'll have the match at and go hunting. As far as travel to this location, um, to Warland, um, whether it be driving or flights, um, you guys can figure that out. Uh, there, are, there are a number of sites, but we won't cover that in this particular video. Now, as far as planning for shooting conditions, actual ballistics, I always like to have a uh, backup drop card. Mm -hmm. um, something I can stick in my arm board that um, if I'm looking for my dope at certain distances for the density altitude at the location, uh, I want to be prepared for that. So I'll need to have weather information. For that, I go to my favorite, which is Weather Underground. Um, I think this website's unique and just the, the level of detail they provide so here we'll select Worland, Wyoming. And what you'll see here, um, they have some basic information. Um, you know, Worland, uh, this is weather at Municipal Airport. So it, this is um, directly north of where we'll be shooting, um, not too far. Elevation of 4226 with your lat latitude and longitude. Um, you have your current day's weather right underneath that, and then right underneath the current day weather, you have your 10-day forecast. Um, you can look at this in both tabular format as well as a graph. Um, I prefer the graph. Uh, you can customize this, and we'll actually need to do that in order to get some of the information we'll need for ballistic information. We'll need dew point, so we'll add that. Uh, temperature, uh, we don't need chance of precipitation, but it's always good to know whether or not uh, we can expect rain or snow. Uh, your station pressure and wind speed again is optional but it's another nice to have it's good to know uh, what kind of wind to expect yeah, and a note on on humidity uh, we'll typically set that at, at 50 percent uh, interesting video by Todd Hognan he talks about that and humidity mm -hmm. doesn't play a huge factor so right you can you can always roll with 50 percent yeah yeah okay so um, with this uh, once we have our graph um, what I'm looking for are what are the large swings in pressure and temperature um, that we can be expecting. And then we'll want to pull that data, copy it down, and then we can take that information and then calculate our ballistics either using the temperature, humidity, uh, and station pressure, or we can convert it to density altitude. And we'll show you how to do that in a minute. Yeah, and, and the reason why we like doing the DA conversion is that's normally just, you know, how, how we think. And from yeah. practical experience, we've, we've realized that, you know, once you have swings, you know, outside of a, of a thousand uh, feet density altitude, it, that, that's where it starts to make an impact at, at longer ranges. Right. So we just want to see, you know, what, what's the swing going to be like uh, throughout the day? Right. So... Um, in this example, so for Saturday, um, you know, I'll note that, okay, low of 8 degrees with a dew point of 7 and a station pressure of 29.71. Uh, if I come up towards the high point, um, I'm seeing a high of 32 degrees Fahrenheit, dew point of 16, and a station pressure of 29.61. Um, Sunday... Uh, since we'll be hunting that day, uh, we would want to probably capture that as well. Uh, looks like a th low of 13, dew point of 12, station pressure of 29.68. And then on the high side, 28 degrees Fahrenheit, 19 dew point, uh, station pressure of 29.88. Now, what do we do with this information? We can, again, go into a solution such as JBM Ballistics, uh, or we could use one of our apps on our smartphones like Shooter or um, AE Ballistics. Uh, a lot of great videos out on the web um, on how to use JBM Ballistics. Uh, you might want to check out those made by uh, 8541 Tactical or Terora Source Rex. Um, both have uh, some good videos. We're not going to replicate that here, but um, you would want to use that data in order to um, input the data you need to calculate solutions. Now, 
Um, if we went to DA, we would need to convert that. Um, there are DA calculators up on the web. Um, if you want to do that, my recommendation is go to NOAA. National Oceanic Ad Atmospheric, Atmospheric <laughs> Administration. <laughs> right. That's uh, a mouthful yeah. there. And uh, so they actually have a website that works, unlike... Uh, the, the Obamacare, uh, the Obamacare website. <laughs> website. Okay, so so again, we're we're getting some uh, payback for our tax dollars. Right. Here. We're getting a nice DA calculator. Absolutely. Now, now yeah. there are other ones. I think this one cost a million bucks to make. <laughs> it, it did. It did probably. Uh, but I think you've you've also made some observations that that this it tends to be a lot more intuitive than some of the aviation yes. ones. Yes. Yeah. So there are other calculators that will calculate DA on the web. Uh, my recommendation is use this. Uh, if you use an aviation calculator, uh, they differ because they will typically ask you for your elevation and they will ask you for your barometric pressure at sea level, which most weather sites won't give you. Um, so I found this much more intuitive and easy because mm -hmm. um, the information we get off the website can go directly in this and it'll give us the information that we're looking for. Right. So right. let's see what sort of swings we're so going to have. So here, here. I, I'm entering in day or uh, Saturday, next Saturday. Um, the low, so 29.71 is the station pressure. I hit convert, and we see here the answer is a negative 3,285. And if I um, enter in the high for Saturday, uh, it was 32 dew point of 10, and station pressure of 29.61. And uh, 1420 minus 1427. So the swing between the low, which is 3285 and 1427, um, you know, difference of almost 1800. Right, right. So I mean, for a hunting trip, I mean, you could you could pick the middle. Yeah, because we yeah. found you know if the DA doesn't swing much more than a thousand, uh, your dope um, won't change meaningfully inside a thousand yards. Mm -hmm. So I think if we picked a midpoint. Um, you know, if we went up to about uh, 20, 26, minus 2,600, somewhere in that range. Should um, be in good shape. We should be in good shape to develop a mm. dope off of that. And, and in a match, I mean, that's just going to be our, our backup card, of course. Right. Uh, you know, we're going to be, uh, you know, checking atmospherics uh, stage by stage because typically we like to make, uh, you know, we'll update our dope card at you know just prior to the stage right now one other uh, item coming back to our weather forecast graph you'll see mm -hmm. on the bottom uh, information about wind so it's always interesting to see um, you know what kind of wind you, you would expect so you know it looks like it ranges between six to seven miles per hour throughout the day you know it might be gusting um, but the wind does change direction so it's good to know you know in what direction the prevailing winds will be coming from now for you guys that are real uh, quantitative uh, quants yeah quants quant jocks <clears throat> there is um, some more interesting stuff you could do here so if you go to the tabular view um, and again hit your forecast uh, you have sort of a, a graphical view but right underneath that you have a, a big table of your history observations over the last month. Um, you can actually take this data and bring it into a spreadsheet for further analysis if you wanted to do that. Um, simply by clicking at the bottom of this, the comma delimited file, <clears throat> it generates a text file that you can copy. And then uh, if you bring up Excel, you can simply paste that in and then going to data text to columns, um, choose delimited by comma, and it'll actually bring that, voila, into Excel. Um, you can kind of clean it up a little bit, you know, wrapping the text and so on. So um, what's kind of interesting in what you can do is you can use these numbers to actually, you know, calculate DA, look at your historical DA trends. Um, you know, trends around your barometric um, and station pressure, as well as wind. Yeah, the wind and the wind was really interesting because you can see on some days, 
I mean, there on the on the twenty second, you had gusts going up to to thirty six uh, miles an hour, yeah. and then it it looks like there on on the tenth, uh, you had gusts going up to to forty two. Right. And uh, besides feeling really really cold, um, I mean that would you know tell you that as you're doping wind, you you could have a lot of variability on some days. That's right. Yeah. You know, it looks like on average the wind hasn't been too bad. Uh, you know, two to seven miles an hour uh, with gusts. Just need to be ready for that. And as you had mentioned, um, weather-wise, you know, just looking at uh, the fact that next Saturday, Sunday, right, it's going to be cloudy, but it will be definitely very cold. So it, yeah, that it gives, first, you, gives you information on how to how to dress. Yeah, that, and I'm I'm sensing, uh, you know, right when it gets right right up to freezing or a little above, that's freezing rain. Uh, yeah. Although it didn't look like there's going to be a whole lot of precipitation. But. No. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's pretty much it. You know, I always found it good to be prepared, you know, coming into these situations, um, you know, knowing how to get to and from places, what you can expect when you're there, and what the shooting conditions will be like. Yeah, and in addition to, to this information, which of course, you know, we'll have some, you know, we'll have some uh, pictures and, and we'll have our our dope cards there's also if you're going to a match you can usually get the the whole uh, match course and and information yeah. about that and you know we have another video on the match eve uh, preparations where we show you how we how we use that information that's right so you can you can go to a match or a hunting trip with a, a whole lot of information at your disposal that's right yeah now one of the videos we have uh coming up probably sometime early next year is uh once you have your stage outline, um, the the match book, uh, what you can expect for each stage is how do you prepare? What like what's the game plan? Developing a game plan, right? Um, so that'll be another interesting video that we're planning on doing. Steve, that was a really informative video. I mean, I, I learned a lot just watching you. Great. Well, I appreciate that, and hopefully you guys found that interesting and useful as well. Yeah, and if you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And remember. Life's an adventure. Stay on target.